Hey guys, so Tai Toshi, one of the hardest techniques I think to do in judo. Um, and uh, yeah, so here's people been asking me, can you do a super breakdown of it? So I thought I'd do a super breakdown of it and we'll talk about it. So when we do a Tai Toshi, a lot of people teach, you know, if, if Tillin has, this is the base of the triangle, I put my foot at the apex or the point and then I pivot on this, snapping the arm, but I back step over here and I stick my leg across and I'm throwing with Tai Toshi. A few things people do wrong already, they put all their weight in this leg. Now, how am I meant to throw someone over there if all my weight's on here? Imagine, like when you push a car, when you, you know, when it's broken down, you're, you're pushing towards the direction, you're leaning and you're pushing the direction you're throwing. And all your weight is going that direction. But if I put all the weight in this back leg, he's just jumping for me every time in training. Look at that floated. But watch. See how he moves that direction? That's what we need to get into the habit of. You see, I mean, we're not driving sideways, but we're driving over this direction over here. So that's what I want you to get into the habit of. So to get in the habit of that, when you're doing moving with your uh, tie push statically, you can put the foot at the top of the triangle, but what I want you to get out of the habit of is pivoting out, outside his legs. Because now it's a bit of a stretch to get your leg across. Now for me, I'm short. If you're taller than me, you can put your foot out here and you can still reach over there. That makes sense. But because I'm small, if I was here, there's no way I could get to there without, um, I wouldn't throw it. So what I need to do, because I'm small, I step, I cross step a little bit further. See how I'm not at the top of the triangle? I'm kind of here. Where I do my Haragoshi, where I do my Chimata, where I do, uh, do my Sea Maggie. You getting the gist of it? So many people teach you put your Haragoshi here, your Uchimata here, your Tai, and then your Sinagi here, your Moro Sinagi here, and your Stoda here, and your Koshi Kurumi here. But Tai Toshi, oh, we do that here. Doesn't really make sense, does it? We should really be putting it in the same spot we do all the others. So when you're doing your, your Tai Toshi, you're stepping quite across, the same as your Uchimata, the same as your Sinagi, right? Arms, and for now when I back step, I don't step out here. Now there's a stretch for me. I step quite close. And now, it's a really nice position for my Tai Toshi. So does that make sense? I think so, and that's how, that's how once I started changing this mindset of, of this, it makes, it, I, I started throwing people with Tai Toshi. But for ages, I was missing the leg. Every time I'd go for Tai Toshi, he just moved that way a little bit, and I'd miss it. Yes, I can do a double stab, yes, I can do other things, but I wanted the direct attack, or, you know what I mean, a good setup of a Tai Toshi, and it would work. But yeah, because I was taking the top of the triangle and I was coming out here, he only has to move, you know, half a foot and he's already outside my legs. You know? Yes, if I was taller, I could maybe get it. But once I started stepping here, back stepping here, now when he moves, look, move, 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 move. Okay, I still get it. Because now I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm taking a head start of him, but before I was starting in the same, he moves this way and I miss it. Now I'm starting pretty much almost in front of him. You know what I mean? I'm here, and I know he's gonna move that way, and as he does, I'm gonna already be ahead of him to trip him over. So that's really important. Actually have a think about it, go to training, ask your partner when you come in, do the traditional way, top it, and get him to move that way a little bit. You miss it. But when you cross step here, and he moves, you get it every time. And that's what you need to be doing in your in, in your when you're your rendering and your competition and you just your technical and you teach it as well. Next aspect is the right is the leg, whether it's right or left. If my leg is so say, if my leg is on tillens, he can't go over. Because I'm actually wedging him in place. So when you walk around the house at home, if there was something, let's just say there's a brick on the ground there and you're walking along, if, you, if your foot hits the brick mid-step, you're gonna fall. But if you went to start walking and the brick was already against your foot, you'd feel it and actually, it doesn't let you get the momentum to fall. It might sometimes, but not very often, and you'll go, oh, you'll move it. But if you caught it mid-step, that's when you're gonna trip. It's the same with Tai Toshi. I don't wanna be wedging him in place, plus I'll hurt his knee, yanking on it, like pushing it, hyper-extending it. I need to bring, bring this foot out a little bit, dragging him onto the leg and then tripping him over, over the leg as he goes over. Makes sense, doesn't it? So 
you know, make sure that body weight's going the direction we're going. You know, make sure, make sure we're not on this leg. Make sure we're getting it even or that direction. Second of all, the first step, you want to make, make sure that it's not top of the triangle, it's over here a little bit. Your back step, come out this direction and you'll catch his leg every time. Third, foot, don't wedge it against here because your wedge means on the spot. Make it come out a little bit. Next aspect is your tai toshi. Some people teach it like this. Now I've had like five knee ops, so I don't really want anyone to be falling on my knee here because it can't bend. And a lot of people have hurt their knees doing tai toshis. But Neil Adams, you know, I think he's a two-time world champion, second the Olympics twice, everyone knows who he is. He does his tai toshi like this. And he's awesome, he's a specialist at it. So, you know, if, if you're more than happy to do the way he teaches it, I mean, he's a world champ. But I like to teach it with his toe up a little bit. So if Till never drops that knee in, I can at least, you know, for me, I don't want to hurt my knee. I've had it, my knees are weak. I'd rather have that bend, you know? So I always bend that knee. And then when I'm pulling him over, I spring him with that leg. So let's have a look at that. Just go there a little bit. So we're here, as I come in, see how it's sprung? Again, here, as, it, as I pull him over, kind of helps with this spring. Yeah. You know, it just adds to the technique of the, of the rotation. So another aspect people do wrong with the Tai Toshi is, is that aspect. Next aspect is this right hand. All right, so many people bring it across because they do Morosi and Agis and, and, they, and they like to bring this across. But if you bring that across, it, there's too much body contact and you'll find it's just a bit too much and what will end up happening is, you know, it'll be turned into more of a, a modern day Siyatoshi. Um, which is not bad if they go over for rip on. But what I like to do is I relax this hand. You must relax it. If you muscle it, you won't be able to close the distance. So if I, if I really use it, I can't get really close. But if I relax it, relax it. And if you do a lot of bench press and shoulders, make sure you're stretching those front delts and chest because you need to be able to close the distance by just pulling it in. All right, so pulling it in. And I try to get my arm in his armpit here. So if you've got a grip, yeah, I try to get in the, in the armpit there, you know? And see now I'm controlling the shoulder, and then when I come under, I'm controlling the other shoulder, with obviously the sleeve, and I've got this little bit of space. It's actually one of, the only, one of the only throws I can think of right now where there's a little bit of space between you, uh, in terms of, you know, Osoto, we're locked on. Para, we're locked on. Uchimata, we're locked on. Koshiguruma, we're locked on. Sienagi, we're locked on. But with this one, there's actually, you know, there's a little bit of space there, see? So it's one of the only ones I can think of at the moment where there's a bit of space. Now see, this is in there, my, my foot's bent, this arm's up. And what I try to do with this left hand as well, some people pull it down, you can feel the difference, eh? Hey? You can feel the difference. If I pull it here, he's not, see how he doesn't go over? He's going now. So we must get that hand out as far as we can. So again, we're here, and I'm pulling it out as far as I can. And at the end, it whips through. This arm whips out as well to finish the Tai Toshi. So, last thing people do wrong, that left leg straight. That left leg straight, you're going to get no power. You can't, you can't get lower than him. You must bend your knees, okay, guys? That's, you know, in judo, you can never pull the sleeve enough, the hikite, and you can never bend your knees enough. So, there are, two, there are heaps of stuff you can work on next time you go and do Tai Toshi. Oh, and the last one you can work on is your setup when you're doing moving or in competition or when you're doing rendero, sorry. Uh, if he stands square, if he's standing square, I'm not trying to throw it till him from here to there, in forwards. I'm trying to throw him diagonally. So what I like to do if his right foot's forward, when I do my type, when I do it in Randori, I make him step over this leg. So when we're walking, so I'll do another one. When we're walking, there's my Tai Toshi. And now look, I only have to do a one step to entry. All right. Okay, I go. Now, after he puts that foot down, not before. If I do it beforehand, he'll pull back on it. Ready? See how he's got that foot to step and he pulls back. I've got to wait after that foot steps. Where can he go? He can't go anywhere. And then I step across one tight toe. So I'll do a throw this time. So he steps, steps. Over he goes to the Tai Toshi. And that principle, once you grasp that principle of um, pulling him after they step, 
your judo is going to get better and better. If you just keep pulling now, they're going to resist it. If you pull now, I've got nowhere to go but to go over that leg. And that's why when I'm fighting Tillin, if I'm, if I'm putting all my weight on this leg and he grabs an arm or and pulls, I'm gone. When you're fighting, this is just a side note from the Taitoshi, you shouldn't be having all that weight in the front leg because all he has to pull me, I can't move that leg. You're going to have your weight a little bit more in the back leg, so when he pulls me, pull me out, I can stop him a little bit. And then that's when the game begins. So I really hope that helps you, Taitoshi, guys. Uh, had fun making the video. Thanks, Tillin. And uh, make sure you sign up to the University of Judo, guys. I'll be a personal judo coach for a fraction of the cost that you know my clients pay one-on-one. -on -one. And um, you know it's going to be an awesome fun. So make sure you check out universityofjudo.com. And if you have any comments or questions, make sure you post them below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks, heaps.